Hi guys, welcome. Welcome to another exciting tutorial. Um, so today we're going to learn, we're going to learn how to build our own very, very simple and um, mark tool. So, um, something I know a lot of you are doing is just sort of passing around the same mark tools all over the place. I know a lot of people have asked the, hey, how hard could it possibly be to write our own mod tool? So, there's a lot of work that goes into the mod tools that are being um, passed around as community assets, of course. And we're not going to go into a fully fledged one, but we're going to show how to create a simple one in a way that I haven't seen anyone do yet. Uh, we're going to leverage uh, the new TypeScript uh, abilities that we've got in Horizons. We're also going to combine that with the new custom UI that's now available um to create it i mean it can create ourselves a, a very very simple mod tool um before i go on if i could just ask you guys to hit the like button uh below this video that would be a massive help at that so we know that you guys are finding this useful um also if you could just um subscribe as well that would be very, very helpful and that drives me to make more uh content for you guys uh if you have any comments or queries post them just below in the comment section as well. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get it back to you as soon as I can. I'm usually pretty quick with these things. Again, with that out of the way, let's move on. Um, so, how we're going to start is we've got ourselves a world here. And you can see uh, over on uh, the side, there is uh, a list of all the things that I've kind of put in here already. Uh, I'm not going to go into some sort of object placement, that kind of stuff is done on other tutorials uh, as a header called gizmos out and object, etc. But just to summarize it, what we've got up there, so we have two spawn points. So I'll do a little fly around tour here. <laughs> so we have two spawn points. We have a release spawn. That is the world spawn. So that's the first spawn that players come in on when they enter the world. Um, but we also uh, use it to release people from the jail which you can see in the distance. So the jail box is something that, you know, ordinarily we just put a little black box in somewhere. Um, and that's where we would still have moved players to if we were choosing to kick them out of an instance. So you can see from another spawn point gives more in here, which I've called jail spawn. And really past that, uh, I've just got some markers on the floor. So I've got a, a similar cylinder here. and a cylinder here. You don't need those. They're just for me to see what I'm doing and some text just to mark out sort of what's what, so you can see the positioning of things when we go into run mode. And then this, again, is just a simple sphere. It's just there to mark where I'm going to put the console uh, for the mod panel that we're going to be adding. Okay, great stuff. Um, so let's get started. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do, I reckon, is get a custom UI gizmo. So we're going to place this here. So if I go into um, the built menu at the top, okay, and I go into gizmos, it's going to show me a menu of gizmos. Uh, the gear skin here, uh, it's going to be a little bit further down. It's called custom UI. It's this one here. Um, ooh, she ran across. Hello. Yeah. Um, cool. So if we click on the custom UI, we now get this custom UI just here. Uh, or rather, we can drag it out and, and just plop and save here. Uh, we can see that's been now added to the outliner just here. So, if I sort of, uh, again, tip actually, rather than pressing these buttons up here, you can actually see they have, they have hotkeys assigned to them. So I can easily flick between whether I want to move or rotate or scale just by pressing the corresponding keys on the keyboard. So that's W for move, which allows me to move it into position. Okay. Great. <laughs> That's looking pretty good. <laughs> um, so of course I can't see this one in preview mode, but I can see it in the editor or if I was in build mode. Um, so I'm going to trust that it's behind me and I know you guys can see that too. Uh, so really, this is the custom UI uh, gizmo that will, will show a UI component, which we're going to write in TypeScript. And we're going to do that now. So the next thing we'll do is to create a script, and I'm going to call it, hmm, let's call it UI Mod Tool. Oops, hang on, sorry, that didn't take, if I keep that again, let's see, UI Mod Tool, just like that. 
to get that plus button in the scripts window. And if a new I mod tool. Okay, once I've done that, I'm gonna press enter. Let me just give it a second. There you go, that's now appearing just up there. Great. So now we're gonna just um we're gonna double click on this. And this should open up in Visual Studio code. That'll be look at that. Okay guys, so now he's done that. So um, what we're gonna do is you'll notice this is this is a component, okay? So component is not what we assigned to custom UIs. What we're going to need to do is we're going to just swap this. So we're going to put in UI components. But oh no, that doesn't exist. <laughs> well, that's because we need to include a library. Um, now, these days, Horizons, I believe, is doing this automatically for you. But if it doesn't, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the editor. We're going to go into scripts. We're going to go into settings, okay? In settings, when we click the API button up here, it's going to show us a bunch of things that we can turn on and off. So, the one that you care about here, core, I believe, is included by default. So we don't see that here, I don't think. But the one that we need is the UI. Two, that's that's the important on this one. So if that's not Selected, make sure that's selected, okay? Make sure that looks like this. But the rest of them, not important right now. And then we just click apply. Okay, if we hit apply, let's go back into our script. Okay, and then I'm going to put a new line on line two here. I'm going to type import star as and i get to call it new i so that's going to be an alias where we are using things from um from the, the ui api that we just added we'll reference it as ui so everything else you can see already is referenced by hzl if it's a core component uh so for example let's take that back hz.component would be valid syntax because component is actually from Horizon Core API, but we're going to be going into this now. So let's just change that back to uh, UI component and let's complete this line. So this is going to be Horizon slash, look at that, it's helping us. If we press this, Horizon slash UI, that now brings it in. You can see because it's slightly grayed out, that means we're not using it yet, but we're going to, we're going to sort that out. So notice now I'm swapping it to a HZ dot component to a UI dot UI component. And then you'll notice that it's throwing up a bit of a wobbly here. So we need to do the same thing. Then the boss, I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste that just here. Now, you can see immediately it's erroring. And that error message says that. So you're probably thinking, oh, what the hell does that mean? Well, quite simply, it's just saying there class using UI component does not have a method called initialize UI. Now that is needed for uh, a UI component. So what we can do here is we can just say initialize UI. Look, it's hinting. Start typing it and off it goes. I just press tab off, we feel that. Uh, and what do we got? So it's actually create the method. Now this is complaining and why is that complaining? Well, it's saying Yeah, I think it wants us to return a user interface object. So to do that, I'm going to say return. And I think it's um, UI dot zero view. Train. And look, it's not complaining anymore. Thick it. But this is a bit of a misnomer because it's just a blank view. It doesn't actually do anything. But you can see all our arrows have gone away. By the way, if you're not looking down the bottom of this problems tab, this will show you if you've got any issues in your code. Um, one thing I would say is that if you do delve off into the UIs themselves, you look into these classes, they will for a uh, problem. So you don't need to worry about those. Just close those classes and the errors will go away. So I'm just going to save this now, guys. There you go. That's a control S. So just tear out file, save, whichever you find easier. Okay. So 
let's have a think about what we want this admin panel to do. So I think we want, we want a few cool features. We want to be able to um, kick people into a jail cell. <laughs> Just over there. We want to be able to release players. Yep. Um, and I would say, no, potentially we're going to put like a mute control on there as well. Now, I think we will have more controls than that. If we want to unmute people, we can just restore them and we can build in a feature to reset their audio back to nearby if they're restored. So, <laughs> let's crack on. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some properties in, okay? So you see this properties definition up here? This is where we actually provide properties. So that where we assign this TypeScript onto this custom UI, we can actually pass in references to the spawn points. So if we start tapping in some of this now, so that the syntax for this is, um, well, we've got the props definition. Let's push this down onto a new line just here. Um, and we're going to call our first one. What's really spawn? I can't spell really spawn um and this is going to be an object i hope that's clear enough for you guys to read uh and this is going to be a type of now it's going to be a um set dot prop types and it's going to be an entity notice when we do the h said dot prop types now she shows us all the possible things that we can assign this to um there's a nice little selection. And if any of you have come across from code blocks, you'll, you'll definitely recognize these. The only, I think, any differences in wording are quotidians used to be called rotations in code blocks. Um, and also, what we see now is entity. Uh, it used to be called objects. So it's the entity that we're after because it's going to be a spawn point. So let's just tap that in there. If I just notice that. VS Code seems to, when you hit Control S, which you've got the TypeScript modules involved, uh, installed, It'll actually also align it for you. Then the next thing we need to do, I'm going to just put a comma in this because this will actually give you a list of things in here. And that's which list, but it's set separate declarations of things. So if I now call this one, just one, oops, and check. Great. And we go. So those are our properties for now. That's all we really need. Um, just to show you that in action, though, to people who did them, is I'm going to click on this, um, let me just save that. I'm going to give it a second. When you hit save, um, there's a little icon at the top, but you may not be able to see it. it's next to script. You've got to wait for that to go through and show that there are no errors. Um, it's just so they're up, uh, up just above the blue highlighted thing just up here where I'm flicking. But uh, yeah, as long as there's no red indicators there and you've got no problems. So in, into this one. What I'm going to do now is try and pull this across a little. Um, and this custom UI, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this attach script button just down on the bottom right. Let's see, I come up with a list of things that I can add. So I'm going to add the UI mod tool, UI mod tool. That convention is the name of the file and the name is a class inside it. So that's the UI component, UI mod tool. So if I click on that, I'm just going to get a stack. And you can now see it's actually. Imagine it's just squishing this up a bit. Sorry about this, guys. Um, you can actually see, like, it's got um, the woolly spawn and the jail spawn. So with this now, I can click on this, the little icon here, and I can say, yeah, link that to the release spawn. And then obviously for the second one, I can link that to the jail spawn. Right, that's now linked up. So our script is now very aware um, of those two spawn points, which is wonderful. Um, okay, let's spring that code editor back up. So if you ever lose the code editor, just go back up to um, scripts and double check on the name of your script. And there we go, it just opens. Good effect. Well, let's crack on. So um, I'm thinking at this point, we should make the panel a certain width from height. Now, this is a guess game, and you do have to fine tune this, okay? But what I'm going to do, I know that this 
UI component because we'll have access to the API documentation and there's an awful lot of material in that that you can read up on. Um, it's not, you can definitely use the code hints in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, it's, there is a, um, an overridable um, member or two, sorry, called panel width. So as I type that in, it's actually giving me that. This is not AI doing this, by the way. This is um, this is just standard code completion that's reading the APIs and making suggestions. So now I've got that. Now we need to declare it as a number. I'm going to make that equal to maybe 500 as, as a guess. Was, remember, you can rescale these things as well. So it's, it's, it's just 500 respective to what its current scale is. Um, and then I'm going to copy that and make this panel height. Okay, and me, I'm going to make that a thousand. So that's, it's, it's twice as high as it is wide. Right. Wonderful. Um.